So, hello everyone and welcome to my talk about understanding and visualizing complex Neo4j instances. My name is Sebastian Müller. I'm CTO of Wireworks, the diagramming company. Uh, we have a booth right up the stairs at the third floor, so please come and visit us after this session to learn more about our products and services. So what's this talk all about? It's about a situation that many Neo4j users are facing. Um, although Neo4j is a schema-less database, it always has an implicit schema. That schema is defined by the data in the database. And since your data evolves and the contents of the database change, so does the implicit schema. So, for example, when new people join, they first need to learn about the schema. And if it's not documented properly or the documentation is out of sync, <laughs> it will be difficult to create new cipher queries or maybe to refactor the data. So you, re you really should have a good knowledge and understanding of the schema. Why? W what is the information that we can get from the schema? Uh, the schema should tell us what label or labels a node of a certain type has or should be given in a database and how these types are used in the database. It can also tell us, of course, what relationship types to use for which types of nodes. And of course, we can see which properties are used which node type, for which node type and which relationship type. One can say that a good understanding of the schema lets you write efficient cipher queries and helps you uncover all the information that's hidden in your data. So what tools do we have to learn about the schema? <clears throat> First of all, of course, there's the Neo4j browser app. In the sidebar, there's a list of all labels and relationship types used in the database and also a list of all the property keys. But these are just simple lists, so there's no information on how they are related to each other. If we click on one of these elements, the app will show a few random nodes that match the given label. Uh, we can try to construct the schema in our mind by interactively exploring the actual data using clicks and by looking at the properties at the bottom. This can give us some information, however, in this way we have no control over what elements are shown and this is actually a lot of manual work and of course this should be automated. Luckily there's a cipher call that can help us here. It's called db.schema and it will give us the metagraph that contains uh, most of the schema information that we're looking for. However, for more complex databases like in this case, uh, the visualization leaves a lot to be desired. The labels overlap and are cropped and the graph is far too dense and, and actually as we later see, the information displayed is misleading sometimes. In this form, the schema is too complex to understand and visualize. So what should the schema look like instead? If we want to improve the schema visualization, we can simply start by hiding those labels and relationships that we're currently not interested in. That's simple, of course. And instead of simply displaying the labels, we should look to see in what combinations they are used in the actual data. For example, there may be tagging labels which are ju just used in conjunction with other labels, like interfaces or for grouping the nodes. And often we can remove those from the schema without actually losing information. We should also think about reorganizing the labels and their combinations as they appear in the database into new schema nodes with maybe more than one label. And of course, finally, a more pleasing layout uh, for, that better fits this kind of diagram would help too. Th but how? The, this is very difficult with the Neo4j browser app, which actually really wasn't built for this kind of task. And since, of course, schemas are just graphs, this is the solution that we came up with. We created a web application using only JavaScript on the client that can help us with this job. We took the JavaScript bolt driver connector, which directly connects to any Neo4j database which is available to the server, and we combined it with the WiFi's library for the visualization of diagrams. And this is what the application looks like. Uh, the schema in this example is from a database that collected publicly available data about social network activities of members of the Neo4j community. And as you can see, the schema is presented in a much more pleasant and uh, easier to read manner. The application provides different methods for the modification of the raw schema. It helped me to create this improved visualization in just a few simple steps. I can show you all of the functionality uh, of the app in this session, so I'll just concentrate on a few. Um, 
One of the modifications I made can be seen in this following example, which is about node label splitting. Um, so uh, this is a display of the schema where some of the less interesting labels have been hidden already. The schema is actually misleading here because it looks like there's a user node who is involved in many different relationship types, tweeting, creating repositories, tagging elements, and so on. However, if we look more closely at the, act, at the actual data in the database, we can see that there's different types of users. The nodes come in, diff in com combinations of labels. And the app can help us split the one user node into multiple labels. Um, and suddenly the schema looks quite different and reflects the data in the database a lot better. Now there's GitHub users creating repositories Twitter users tweeting, and Stack Overflow users posting answers and questions. And we can even see that in this database, Stack Overflow users never tweet or create repositories. So it's quite different from the, or, uh, from the original view that we had. With this knowledge, uh, it will help us to do the correct insertion of the data, to create more specific and efficient cipher queries, and during refactorings of the database. So now that we have a good understanding of the schema, we can use that to also explore the data. Um, where is it? Um, in the schema view, we can inspect the properties of the schema elements, which constraints are defined, which properties we can expect, and also the view lets us select elements that we're interested in and disable those that we're not interested in. Then, in the Explorer view, we can use the set of available node types to choose nodes as a starting point for the exploration. So there's Stack Overflow user with the name of Michael Hunger. And we can import that into the view. And then we can interactively explore the relationship similarly to the way it's done in the Neo4j browser app. However, this time, for each type of node in the schema, we can specify completely different visualization templates. The templates here were created using SVG and complex flexible data binding mechanisms. We can specify which properties to display and how to display them. And this allows us to create a visualization that exactly shows the information that we're currently interested in. But that's not all we can do with this app. Um, one more thing I would like to show you is most databases contain more structural information that we cannot see by just traversing the relationships that exist in the database explicitly. And this example is about implicit transitive relationships. So back in the schema view, um, we can specify these transitive relationships in an intuitive manner. We define a new relationship, which is uh, about stack overflows, users posting answers to questions posted by possibly other stack overflow users. Then we create that relationship and we can modify the, the cipher to exactly suit our needs and we can give it a label like helped, the user helped another user. And then um, the relationship, the new relationship is displayed in the schema. Back in the explorer view, I can then explore the, the network of stack overflow users and how they helped other users. It's very important to understand that this did not modify the, the data in the database. It's all done just on the visualization level. Um, so the app allows me to enter also to enter my own cipher queries and apply different layouts automatically, run graph analysis and algorithms and export the visualizations. And so much more, <laughs> which I would like you to invite you to try this out yourself. Um, we, uh, I need to say thank you, because uh, we will present that application at our booth at third floor. So that's it already. Please do come and visit us uh, at our booth. Uh, we will tell you how to sign up for the app, which we'll be providing as a service for everyone soon. And of course, come by and learn how you can build your very own applications using Neo4j and our wi fi diagramming software libraries. Happy diagramming. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, so the question is where these transitive relationships are stored. Um, uh, the model, the schema graph, is, is held in this application in memory. In, it's just in the, in the, in the app in, in, in memory, so it will be lost unless you save it. And so it doesn't touch the database. So uh, it's just keeping the state in, in the application and, and creates the cipher query. And for the, for the purpose of visualization, the queries are executed and the, the, um, well then display the graph. So they aren't stored anywhere unless you, yeah dump them somewhere, <laughs> but that's not implemented yet, so, so. thank you. Yeah. Another question? Thanks so much. Thank you.